Indeed our praise is due to Allah We praise him Seek his aid and we ask his forgiveness. We seek the refuge of Allah from the evil which is in ourselves. We also seek refuge in Allah from the consequences of our evil actions. May Yahdihillah Fala Mudillala. Whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide him. Wa may yudalil fala hadiyala. And whoever Allah chooses to be misguided. There is none who can guide him. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. I bear witness. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is alone and he has no partners. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the worshipper and the final messenger of Allah. أَمَّا بَعْدْ فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ Thereafter the best of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرَ الْهَدِي هَدِيُ نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And the best of guidance is the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَإِنَّ شَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا Indeed, the most evil of affairs are those matters which people have innovated and introduced into the religion of Islam. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ For indeed, every innovated matter is a bid'ah. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every bid'ah is misguidance. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance only leads to the fire. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ O people of Iman, fear Allah as He ought to be feared. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state of being Muslims. مَعْشَرَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Yesterday, a great day passed Buyers, a great day from the year of Islam. And it is Eid al Adha. And for every nation, for every ummah, for every group of people, and for every religion, they have specific days and festivals which they celebrate. So the Christians, they have their festivals and they have their days. The Jews have their festivals, they have their days. The Mushrikun, the people of Shirk, the polytheists, they have their days and they have their festivals. And our Lord Allah Jalla Fil Ula, He has made for the Muslims, for the Ummah of Islam, our own days and our own festivals. And they are Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu he narrates in Sunan Abi Dawood. Qadima Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Madina. That when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he first entered into Medina, كان لهم يومان يلعبون فيهما. The people of Medina before Islam, they used to have two days or two festivals, which used to play, enjoy, and celebrate. فقال لهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هذا اليومان. The messenger said to them, What are these two days? They said, يا رسول الله أو messenger of Allah. يَوْمَانِ كُنَّا نَلْعَبُ فِيهِمَا فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ Two days 
that we used to enjoy ourselves in in the days of Jahiliyyah, i.e. the days before Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ replied, he said, Qad abdalakumullah khayran minhuma. Allah has given you two days which are better than these two days. Eid al Fitri wa Eid al Adha. I, the two Eids of Islam. So, this is what is sought from us as Muslims. That we know our religion and we know its virtue and how valuable it is. That we as Muslims, we have our own ibadat, our own acts of worship, and we have our own days of celebration. We have our own rules and laws. We as Muslims, we have an Islamic identity and we have a Muslim culture or an Islamic culture. And it is upon us that we implement the guidance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the people of Islam. And we have no need of imitating others or copying the way of others. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent down to us a book which is better than any other book, which contains guidance in every aspect of the life of a person. Allah said, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ We have sent down to you a book which clarifies everything. And Allah said in the Quran, Ma farratna fil kitabi min shay. That we did not leave off any matter in this book. And He said, Inna hadhal Quran, indeed this Quran, Yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. It calls, it guides to that which is most correct, to that which is most upright. Wa yubashiru al mu'mineen. And it gives glad tidings to the believers. الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who do righteous deeds. أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا That for them is a great, magnificent reward. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He sent to us the best of mankind. Rather, He sent to us the best of creation. Sayyidul Mursaleen, the chief of all of the prophets and the messengers. He said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We did not send you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except to a mercy to all of mankind. And he said, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Indeed, a messenger has come to you from yourselves. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ It hurts him, that which is difficult to you, or for you. حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ And he focuses on that which is good for yourselves. بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ And he is merciful towards the believers. So if this is the book of Islam, i.e. the Qur'an, and if this is the messenger who was sent to mankind, I Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we as the ummah of Islam, and we as Muslims, we have no need to look to other than Islam, or to seek guidance from other than the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma'ashar al muslimin If you consider these two great days, I Eid al Fitr and the Eid which passed by yesterday, Eid al Adha. And if you contemplate these two great days, you will notice that both of these days come at the end of a great act of worship in Islam. Rather, great pillars of Islam, rather, great symbols of Islam. So Eid al-Fitr comes after the sacred month of Ramadan, the best month from the months of the year. 
an Eid al-Adha comes at the end of the great ritual of Al-Hajj. One of the greatest forms of worship in Islam. It is from Sha'ir al-Islam, from the great symbols of Islam, the rituals of Islam. Rather, it is a pillar upon which Islam is based. And millions of Muslims come together from lands far away in order to congregate in that sacred city of Mecca. Perhaps your brothers and sisters from this very masjid have gone in order to perform the pilgrimage. So they stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sacred city of Mecca making tawaf making sa'i in a state of ihram remembering Allah supplicating to Allah turning to their Lord and as all of you know and you will have heard of that yesterday and a few days before this a large number of Muslims died whilst making Hajj. Rather we hope that they achieved martyrdom and shahada through their death in the sacred city of Mecca. So before the days of Hajj almost 300 people died and yesterday on the day of Eid over 800 people died. And we ask Allah to accept their righteous actions. People reacted differently to these deaths. Some amongst the non-Muslims, they started to mock Islam. They said, why doesn't Allah save them? Why doesn't your God save those people if they have gone for his pilgrimage? So as Muslims, we have to contemplate and think about what happened. And how do we reply to such people who mock Islam? So our first contemplation is that this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He decrees whatever He wills. And anything which He decrees is with His wisdom. Allah said, Wallahu yahkumu la mu'aqqiba li hukmihi. Allah is the one who judges. Allah is the one who decides and there is none who can adjust the decisions of Allah. So everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed, then it is due to great wisdom. Any good which touches a person, any harm which befalls a person, all of it is from the great wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he who knows this knows. And who is, he who is ignorant remains ignorant. Secondly, from the great ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that life and death is in his hands. And he gives life to whoever he wills. And he gives death to whoever he wills. He said in the Quran, huwa yuhyi wa yumit. He is the one who gives life. And he is the one who gives death. Wa ilayhi turja'un. And to him you will return. And he said, La ilaha illahu. There is no deity worthy of worship except him. Yuhyi wa yumit. Because he is the one who gives life. And he is the one who gives death. Rabbukum wa rabbu abaikum al awwaleen. He is your Lord. And he is your, the Lord of your forefathers who came before. The third contemplation is that there is nobody who has been guaranteed from the certainty of death. Regardless of how great a Muslim becomes and how great his worship is and how much he loves Allah and how much Allah loves him, then every single person will taste death. And Allah did not decree eternity for anybody. 
Rather, he said, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدِ that we never gave any human before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa eternity upon this earth. Rather, the most beloved of people to Allah, the prophets and the messengers, they died and they passed away. And the most beloved man to the prophet, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he also died and he passed away. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رسول. And what? Who is Muhammad except a messenger? قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ Previously, before him, messengers came and messengers went. أَفَإِمْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلْ If he, Muhammad, dies, or he is killed, إِنْ قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ Will you then turn away on your backs? وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرُّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا And whoever turns away, then he will not hurt Allah at all. وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ And Allah gives the reward to those people who show gratitude to him. So we say the same about Hajj. That these people, they were men and women. And people before them died in Hajj and other acts of worship. And just because they died in Hajj, does this mean that now we turn away from Islam? Or we start mocking Islam? For whoever turns away and mocks Allah and mocks Islam, فَلَنْ يَضُرُّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا Then none of this will harm Allah. Rather the reward is for the people who show a shukr, who show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth contemplation is that we as Muslims, we live this life in the dunya. However, we also believe in the akhirah, in a life which is after death, in a life which is eternal and everlasting. And Allah says, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ How do you disbelieve in Allah? وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ and you were dead, meaning you were nothing, and then he gave you life. Thumma yumitukum, and then he will give you death. Thumma yuhyikum, and then he will resurrect you once again after this death. Thumma ilayhi turja'un, and to him you will return. And he said, Za'ama alladhina kafaru, an la yub'athu. That the people of disbelief, the non Muslims, they claim they will never be resurrected. قُلْ بَلَا وَرَبِّي لَتُبْعَثُنَّ Say rather by my Lord you will be resurrected and then you will be informed and told about everything which you used to do. وَذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ And this is easy upon Allah. So the person who believes in the hereafter i.e. a life after death and he has iman in this then his outlook on life is different to the one who does not believe. And his scales by which he measures life and success and failure is different to those who disbelieve. So we as Muslims, we believe in the hisab, in the accountability. And we believe in recompense, reward and punishment. The one who does righteous will be rewarded in the hereafter for his righteousness. And the one who does evil will be punished in the hereafter for his evil. And the believer, even if he is pricked by a thorn in this life, and he tastes just that amount of hurt or pain, then Allah rewards him in the hereafter. As the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ مُؤْمِنٍ يُشَاكُ بِشَوْكَةٍ there is not a believer that if he's pricked by a thorn, illa rafa'ahullahu bihi daraja, except that Allah raised for him a rank. Where is this rank? Where is this degree? degree where is this degree that a person is raised for when he's pricked by a thorn? It is in the hereafter. And the Prophet said. عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ 
How great is the affair and the life of a believer. Inna amrahu kullahu khair. His affair, all of it, is always goodness. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ And this is for nobody else except the believer. إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ أَسَّرَّا شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ If some goodness touches him, some goodness comes to him, he shows shukr to Allah, it is goodness for him. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ أَذَّرَّا And if some harm befalls him, he is afflicted by a calamity, sabr. Then he shows patience. فَكَانَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ And this is goodness for him. And therefore, those people who are afflicted with this calamity during Hajj, then because we believe in the hereafter, then no doubt their great reward it is in the hereafter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, from the contemplations regarding what happened, is that just because those people, they passed away, and many of them, they did not complete their Hajj, then this does not mean that their efforts were wasted or their striving was, was lost with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that their wealth was wasted because they did not complete their hajj. Rather, Allah does not allow such people to die in vain. As He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ amala. Allah does not waste the actions of those people and the rewards of those people who have done goodness. And he said, Inna Allah la yudhi'u ajr al muhsinin Allah does not waste and lose the reward of those people who do goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al ghafur rahim. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. We spoke about those Muslims, our brothers and sisters, who were afflicted with a calamity and they passed away in hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave them an honorable death. For He combined for them an honorable death in a sacred place, in an honorable time, Aydul Hijjah, in an honorable situation. And those people, Allah decreed that they either died on Thursday or they died on Friday. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke about Muslims who die on Thursday night on the day of Friday. He said, مَا مِن مُسْلِمٍ يَمُوتُ يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ أَوْ لَيْلَةُ الْجُمْعَةِ There is no Muslim who dies on the day of Friday or the night before Friday, i.e. Thursday. إِلَّا وَقَاهُ اللَّهُ مِن فِتْنَةِ الْقَبَرِ Except that Allah saves him and protects him from the fitna in the grave. And this hadith, it is in At-Tirmidhi. And Albani rahimullah considered it to be Hassan due to the many narrations. Also, those brothers and sisters who died, they died far away from their family members. They died whilst they were on a journey and traveling in difficulty. And many of them died due to a collapse of a crane or other people. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he affirmed a shahada, martyrdom, for people who die in this way. And these people, our brothers and sisters, they died whilst in the state of ihram. And amongst them were those who were worshipping Allah. Others, those who were, whose tongues were moist with the remembrance of Allah. Others who were making talbiyah. Others who were prostrating and making dua. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُبْعَثَ الْمَيِّتْ That a deceased person, he will be resurrected عَلَى مَا مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ According to his actions which he died upon. 
So the one who dies in sujood, he's resurrected in sujood. The one who dies in ihram, in goodness, in dua, in tasbih, in talbiyah, is resurrected as such. And the final matter perhaps a non-Muslim will not understand. And this is that for every single Muslim, it is an honor to die in the days of Hajj. And it is an honor to die in a state of ihram. And I don't know a single Muslim who does not desire this. Rather, if I was to ask every Muslim in this masjid, every one of you, I believe with certainty that every single one would raise his hands and say, rather I would die in a state of ihram in the situation that those people died in. So perhaps the non-Muslim will not understand. But this death of our brothers and sisters, it is an honor for them. And it is not a calamity. However, at the same time, this does not mean that we don't feel the pain of those people and the pain of their family members. And upon us here in this town is to contemplate and to think that this is the reality of life and this is the reality of death. That it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only certainty is that we will return to Him. So how many of those people, they left their families, they said their farewells, yet they will never return. And how many amongst them bought toys for their children, however they are not able to give them their toys. So a person, a Muslim, contemplates this. And he acts in that which is goodness to him or for him. And Allah says, Allah. Fear the day in which you will return to Allah. And then every soul which will be paid back according to that which he has earned. And nobody will be oppressed on that day. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun. Wa salamun ala al mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Aqim is salah.
فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر
الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 